when the Red Sox, I remember 14, I was already gone. You get tra- Lackey got traded. Gomes got traded. You got traded from that 14 yeah. team. Lackey came to St. Louis with me. You went to Oakland with Johnny. First of all, switching teams is the hardest thing to do the first time because you, you've yeah. never done it. You came up with the Red Sox, and I remember the first time I switched teams, you're like, oh, my gosh, this is a whole new world. It sucks. What was that like? And then we'll get into a little bit more. I want because I have some questions about some more stuff there. Um, well, I think it's weird going, especially who we got traded for. You know, we got we got traded for Cespedes, who was like a folk hero out there. So you, you're already kind of coming in, you know, on on pins and needles. And it was such a I don't want to say it, it was such a different experience because the team was so much younger than we were. Um, and, and you know, I was. 30 at the time. So, I mean, that, that says a lot, right? Like just a lot of guys, even, even not even based on age, just based on experience in the big league. So they were a young, young team. Um, I knew a couple of the guys just from the Red Sox organization. Um, you know, Ma, Brandon Moss was out there. Uh, and then I had Johnny with me, which really helped. He had played for him before and kind of gave me the rundown on, on what to expect and um, you know, that sort of thing. So, it's just, man, like you said, it's a weird feeling when you walk in that clubhouse, especially, you know, it's not like you got traded after spring training and, and you've got six months to build this, uh, you know, this rapport relationship with guys like you're walking in. I think we walked in on Friday, Saturday, and then I pitched Monday, I think is what it was, or, or I might've pitched Sunday. I pitched Sunday. Um, so you meet the catchers the day before and it's like, all right, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I, I, who are we playing? You know, like you don't even know who you're playing. You, it's just, it's a weird, it's a weird deal. Um, and then, you know, most of the time when you get traded to a team, it's because they're making a run. So now we went from last place to, so I think they were first at the time or second, or at least in it, whatever they were. Um, and, and now you, you, your, your whole mindset's changing. Like, okay, now we got a chance to, to win a world series. So, you know, now it's like, okay, it's go time. Um, it's weird, man. It's it's such a it's such a weird feeling walking in there. You're like, you know, the new kid at school, and you get everybody looking at you, like, you know, whispering behind your back and all that stuff. But um, it was cool. I, I mean, the, got to play for for Bo Mel um, out there for a little bit, and he's a great manager. Um, so you know, I mean, it, it's 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 just weird. It's a weird feeling. So you mentioned the ex-girlfriend part. Can you clarify for some fans during trade deadline season, especially that go, oh, just trade him. He's about to be a free agent. And then you can get some good shit back. And then you can re-sign him in the offseason, which almost never happens, even if yeah. the team is interested. Like even this year, of course, all the talks about Otani. And I don't think he's going to be traded. But people are there are some delirious Angels fans that are like, trade him, you can get a ton, and then you can sign him in the offseason. I'm like, good luck with that. So what yeah. is that ex-girlfriend experience like if a team does come crawling back to you once you hit free agency? Well, it's tough. It, it, it's good. It, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing and a bad thing, right? Like, so you sit down with them. You already know the whole spiel they're going to give you because you've been there for how long, right? So you know – kind of what their selling points are going to be. So you got the familiarity with it and, and you don't have to worry about the jitters and meeting somebody new and all that. The hard part is, is when you have these other teams that are interested in you, you know, they're selling you, they're selling you on something that they're, they're wanting you to come be a part of. Right. So now you kind of see, and then also too, like, I didn't know I could play anywhere else other than Boston, you know, like I've only worn that Jersey. So you send me somewhere and now I figure out, oh, well, baseball's just baseball, right? Then then you kind of go, okay, well, maybe I could play in Chicago or maybe I could play in San Francisco. Um, you know, so you start thinking about these things and then now they're trying to woo you over here. And so it just be, kind of comes a competition and, and then it becomes like, okay, well, I already know what's over here, right? Like, so what do you guys got? Like, okay, Cubs, you've got Chris Bryant coming. You got Javi Baez coming. You got Kyle Schwarber coming. You got all these guys that are supposed to be studs coming. Then you just traded for Dexter Fowler and you got Miguel Montero. And you just, okay, wait, now you just signed Joe Madden. Okay, well, you know, well, this is looking pretty cool over here. You know, so it's like, that's the hard part, right? Like, you don't see the free agent or not the free agent, the, the guy that gets traded, turn free agent, come back that often because everybody else is trying to sell what they've got 
I think, a little bit harder than than the team you were with. Well, having Theo there, right, had to help. And well, yeah, I, there and you go. Guys. Yeah, I forgot about that. That I mean, that was a big thing, right? Like, I, I've known Theo since I was in the minor leagues, you know? So, uh, it, it just, like, you had that familiar side of it, and which kind of helped ease into the new side. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it helped me. Like, okay, maybe I can play over here and be a part of this and he'll help me kind of fit in and, and make sure that everything will be good and you know, you kinda of get that that family feeling and then but you're still part of a new team. So um but yeah, man, it's I, I think it's just when you do that too, you've got that feeling of, you know, well they, they got rid of me. They didn't want me. You know, th- these these other teams, they want me. They want me just a little bit more than you do. So then you start looking at that a little bit harder as opposed to the, the old team. That's well, when we talked to Johnny Damon, when he went from Boston to New York, he said the same thing. He's like, New York, Boston, I knew what I had in Boston, but New York came after me and said, well, maybe if Boston really wanted me, they would have signed me. Now New yep. York, they really want me because they're offering me a better deal to for a new place, which totally makes sense. But you're a liar because in 2014, <laughs> we played together, you, Gomes, Lackey, Ross, you guys had conversations, and, and maybe I, – I remember these. We're going to go to Boston. We're, we're going to go to Chicago after we're all free agents. <laughs> and we're going to win. Now, see, he knows I'm right. Because yeah, I was no, like, man, did. maybe take me with you guys too. I'd be kind of cool. Right? You guys had those conversations before you became a free agent and went to Chicago. Well, well yeah. I mean, I think you, you, always, you always, you know, is the grass greener, right? Like, hey, we all have this opportunity at the end of, of this year – and this is this is pre getting traded too. Like, were you still like in the back of my mind? I'm still thinking I'm going to sign here. You know, like I'm still I'm still going to be here. And it, 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 you know, we can talk about this stuff, but doesn't mean that it might actually happen. Um, you know, and, and also too, there's got to be they they there's got to be interest on the other side. Like, you don't know. Maybe I'm not in the Cubs' plans. Maybe they're dude, not. You ready. knew Theo, dude. You knew Theo was coming after you. Don't even. You knew <laughs> Theo was coming. Are you kidding me? I, had an idea. I just didn't know. I didn't know that they were doing full court press, um, like they did. I had an idea, but you know, they they like Theo even told me after we got all the the stuff done. He's like, you know, this this kind of sped up the process a little bit. We were we were gonna go, you know, full court in sixteen, going into sixteen, um, as opposed to going into fifteen, and then. You know, obviously, like I said, they got I think they had some deals that fell in that made them go, OK, we we might need to spend a little bit of money this year. And then obviously getting Joe, I think was like, oh, we, we 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 really need to spend some money. We, we can we can maybe do this a year quicker than we were planning. Um, and, you know, and I think he wasn't ready to bring up the prospects like he, he ended up doing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, man, I think we all had conversations about. Other teams, you know, because you like when we got traded to uh, to Oakland, I asked uh, I asked guys about other teams as well, where they've been, where they've played. And, you know, you start kind of putting that in the filing cabinet of when, you know, who's going to who's going to come after you. And if they do, you know, I asked about the Yankees. I asked about all, you know, different teams just to see, you know, what's out there, what they thought. And that way you can kind of go in and with maybe a little head start on the whole process, but yeah, you man, you, the you were never going to the Yankees. You never <laughs> pitched for the Yankees. No, I never you got played a call. for the Red Sox in Oakland. Like the two teams that hate the Yankees the most, you're not going to all of a sudden say, Oh man, I'm going to go to the Yankees. Damon did. <laughs> yeah. But Damon's different than John. John has a little, Damon's a little more crazy than John. <laughs> I mean, Johnny is a little, a lot more crazy. than hey, John I, would, Lester. I know I would have listened to him if they called. I know that. Yeah. Well, we all would have, but Hey, you know. If the Yankees, I mean, come on, let's let's do simple math here. It's it's cool to get pitched and have your friends and all of that. If the Yankees offered thirty million dollars more on an overall deal, wouldn't you be very seriously considering going there during that free agent period? One hundred percent. And you know that was the that was the hard part because like when we got down to the nitty gritty at the end, the Giants came in and were were going to give me the seventh year guaranteed, but I had to make a decision, you know, then. Um, which we were down to right when we were going to make the decision anyway. But when you get a seventh year guaranteed for another, I think it was another 25, you know, you're like, ooh, like, I, I need to I need to think about this. Um, but, you know, coming coming back from Oakland 
and getting to play out there and seeing kind of how West Coast baseball is, it was just something that we didn't want to do. I, I wanted to stay more, uh, you know, a little more local than that. But yeah, I mean, to, to your point, yeah, you got to sit down and and really contemplate, you know, do I want to take this extra year or do I want to go somewhere, you know, kind of like Chicago or wherever, Yankees or wherever it is and, and you know, be a part of that. 